Hey baby, so we're on YouTube, so okay, we're, we're, looking really grody right okay, uh, we're all looking grody, so we're going to take the Can-Am for a ride, we're going to compare it to the new Jeep stuff, this is, this is what I want my Jeep to do, is ride like this Can-Am, so there's a big dip up here, we're going to hit it. Okay, so this is about 40 miles an hour. This is a dip I can take in my dually at maybe 15 or 20, normally around 10 miles an hour. And sort of as I talked about, um, I want to get my Jeep and the suspension on my Jeep where it, you know, probably never be as good as the Can-Am, but gets something where I can get a little more high speed action out of it. So keep that in mind as we go through this next couple of videos about my Jeep, about, you know, the Dana 60 and all the upgrades I did, because this is the goal. Okay, YouTube. So, I guess I wanted to do a little wrap-up video of the Dana 60 upgrade project. You know, I'd already stretched the wheelbase, so I'm going to talk a little bit first about, you know, how it turned out. I've been driving it now for about a week. Um, posted a video on the coronavirus and did a whole bunch of upgrades. Had to freeze the top off the transmission, had to replace the front uh, <coughs> track bar rubber bushing with a, with a heim joint. Did a couple little upgrades to it and, and fine tuned it and now she's running pretty good. Um, had a couple goals on this build. Um, one of them was to make the Jeep run a little more like my wife's Can-Am. So, you know, as you can see, it's you see it there behind me. It's a little lifted, a little higher, um, <clears throat> and I'll show you the how much up and down travel. You know, before when I was just rock crawling, I had a couple inches up travel and mostly down travel, and a pretty soft suspension. I went to a stiffer suspension. You know, in addition to putting the Dana 60 on there and did some other stuff that I thought would make it run a little better at speed because we're gonna start going out to places like Glamis and. Uh, probably Johnson Valley and start running some rock trails and some some high speed stuff so let me show you a few of the things that you know really uh, we got done on this lengthy project okay let's start with the beef Dana 60 uh, picked up that uh, Dynatrack it was just basically the housing the knuckles um, had some five on five and a half outers. I changed those out. So, you know, uh, in one of my first terrible videos, I <laughs> spent way too long explaining how to uh, do a ring and pinion in the 60. That seems to be working well. Um, then we went about fabricating brackets and a suspension. I went with the three link, uh, redid the steering, you know, and the steering works great. I can drive down the road uh, 50, 60, 70 miles an hour. I don't get a lot of vibration. And yeah, built this cool arm to go on there. It turns really nice and tight, about as much as you can get. Um, you know, I got my I got my uh, sway bar hooked up. That was the one I had before. Um, everything looks good. Notice, you know, about on my 12-inch coilovers, I'm probably about five and a half, six inches of up travel, and you know, six or seven inches of down travel and that's more uh, especially in the back used to have none um you can see my arms there a little bent this is pretty cool this turned out good one of those videos i'll probably show some clip you get up in there you see where the exhaust and that uh third link arm tucked into there and 
my tower it tucks right up nice into that little gap right there in the jeep so that turned out good um some stuff i may do i think that track bar might be bent a little more although it's inch and a half 0.25 ball dom so it's pretty heavy duty so that was one big part of the upgrade okay so among other things um see my front arms that i built the third arms tucked up there and there's the rear suspension the four link that i had on there before 14 bolt in the rear so i did do some bunch of upgrades to the rear uh, the biggest ones is i went to these nice fox coilovers um kind of put a double shock on there squeezed the shock in in right there behind my gen right tank and once again you can see five or six inches of up travel and six or seven down travel and i'll tell you it's taken some pretty good uh rough terrain at, at high speeds already really well really happy with that so that was the big upgrade to the rear um <clears throat> so the jeep is running good and driving good um i'm gonna spend some time talking about you know every once you know when they see a build like this you know uh, what's your anti-dive, what's your uh, anti-squat, and I'm going to go ahead next and I'll probably post some of those numbers and talk a little bit about uh, that and some other calculators I used online to uh, get this thing sort of dialed in where it's running pretty good. Okay, welcome to Engineering Hell. This is uh, part of the video that probably most people will tune out but I wanted to sort of talk about my Jeep and after all this work what what actually happened okay so and, and I call it by the numbers this is kind of look at all the different ways to compare your Jeep probably the most important number that's up here or one of the most important is weight a stock Jeep 3,407 pounds my Jeep weighed on a scale the other day 5,150 pounds, almost 1,800 pounds of weight I have added to that Jeep. That's a lot, that doesn't even include me sitting in there. So that's a pretty interesting thing. So clearly a stock Jeep is a lot lighter than mine. And that's a big deal because you need a ton of strength to make up for adding all that weight. Okay, so, you know, we'll talk about some other stuff. My wheelbase got stretched from 93 to 102 inches. And of course, that improves your approach angles from a stock at 42 in the front, 32, and I'm about 20 degrees in the front, about zero in the back. So your, your approach and departure angles are, you know, affected, of course, by your wheelbase and big tires. Um, width, best I number I could find was a stock Jeep is about 66 inches wide. Mine is, eh, it's about 82 in the front, 81 inches in the rear because the tires stick out. Uh, 16 inches wider that's that's a that's a significant amount about eight inches per side um, so you got all this extra width you got all this extra height um, extra length and then you start talking about you know what did all this weight gain me you know so I, I want to talk a little about the axle so I went for my stock Dana 44 and we'll talk I think they're 1.31 30 splines and the front 60s is 1.5 35 splines 14 bolt is a 35 spline. It's got a huge shaft. It's kind of tapers. I didn't want to put just a dimension because it kind of changes, but I don't necessarily hear about a bunch of people breaking 14 bolt axle shafts. And I guarantee I'm not going to break one with my uh, cheesy stock motor. I'll address that problem later. The axle tubes, they're like a two and a half inch by quarter inch wall tube, and they're just notorious for bending. My front 60 is a 3.25 inch and a half inch thick. My rear is a four inch and a half inch thick uh, axle tube, significantly stronger. I'm not gonna have to worry about bending those. I still kind of wonder why guys, you know, spend a gazillion dollars trussing a 14 bolt or a 60. I mean, man, you really, you gotta be doing some serious jumping and hammering if you're gonna bend something like that. But okay, people do it, it's, it's cool. And that's what they do. I can understand adding brackets and a truss over the top to hold a bracket, but I see these giant, contraptions where they welded them um, into these super stiff structures and it, adds a, it does add a ton of weight uh, when you're talking about a, you know if you, if you did that to a stock axle 
I would get it, especially with the flimsy axle tubes. But for something like this, what I'm running, I still see guys doing that. But it seems like the popular thing to do. Um, so that's it. You know, I went from a 760 U joint to a 1440. Those are bigger U joints. I mean, that's really, when you go from that 44 to that 60, you know, that bigger U joint, or if you run RCVs, that bigger RCV, that's really the one where you really gain a ton of strength, you know? So, you know, so that the axle is pretty cool. The design is actually really important too. As I, as I went from stock, I had a semi float in the rear, which means it doesn't, you know, if the axle shaft breaks, it means your tire falls off. And I had a, a unit bearing in the front, which means you can't lock in and lock out and get all kinds of driveline vibration problems. And as I upgraded, Got to a full float rear, I could snap an axle shaft, pull it out, keep rolling down the trail, no problem. You know, um, my my front is a full float, 35 spline outers with locking hubs, which means I can, if I break an axle, I can unlock a hub. Lots of stuff that helps you get off the trail. Um, it's kind of it for the axles. Travel, I knew what stock was, but stock doesn't have a ton of travel, we know that. I've got 12 inch coilovers. When you start talking about total wheel travel because they're not at the end of the axle, you get about 14 inches per side, front and rear. Um, <laughs> my spring rates, you can put whatever you want on a stock Jeep, but stocks are about 200 pounds, and I'll talk a little more about this later. I went to my combined spring rates about 113 pounds, and uh, when I go off the upper tender coil and I hit the main spring, I'm at 300 to 325. Um, I did find a number for a stock articulation, this standard sort of RTI ramp, it was about 450 on stock, I'm somewhere around 900 by my rough calculation, and clearly I've gained, I've gained a ton in articulation. Um, the numbers everybody wants to know, oops, I forgot to write this one down, anti-squat and anti-dive. About 61% anti-dive in the front. I'll show you a video and let you look at the numbers. 68% uh, anti-squat. These are two numbers that are talked about constantly um, that I think are relatively important, but quite, quite frankly, I'm gonna do a whole bunch of videos that talk about these and what do they really mean. You, know, you would think with a 61% anti-dive, you just believe that number was the be all end all that the front of my Jeep would be diving like crazy when I hit the brakes, which it doesn't do at all because you can compensate for all that anti-dive. I just have a stiff suspension. I got a fairly stiff set of springs and shocks and it doesn't really dive at all. So I could have gone down to a 25% or still been fine. I mean, I can go down to zero and be fine because really you tune your suspension. You know, you, you build your suspension a certain way with a certain amount of anti-dive and uh, anti-squat and these 60, 50 to 70% numbers, I just picked those out of my design because that's really kind of the consensus of what people said. Yeah, that's kind of what I run. I did a lot of research, so I went, well, let's just go with that. I can actually adjust mine. In the front, I can go up to about 80, and in the rear, I can go down to about, I think I can go down a little more and up to about 100. So I can go to like, not up to 100, maybe about 80. So I go from 68 up to 80 if I go to the top bolt and then down to the bottom bolt, I can change it lower, I guess. But the frequency, this is where I started. You know, and, and with my primary and main springs, I was shooting for the front uh, frequency of about 1.1 and that, um, you do some calculations, I'm gonna show you more in the video here. Uh, you wanna balance that frequency. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about frequency because I think it's the most important thing. Frequency is really how stiff your suspension is. A Corvette's gonna have a pretty high frequency. A Formula One, Formula One car is gonna have a super high frequency. And really, frequency is just how stiff is your suspension, you know? And so, vehicles with a really high frequency are really good at high speed. And I've already talked about how, you know, one of my goals was to be able to drive this thing at high speed. For, for an off-road vehicle, you need a fairly high, or a higher frequency, you know, to be stable and to be able to run at speed off-road like my wife's Can-Am. So you need a, a higher frequency than you would with just a straight rock crawler. And 
you also need a lot of travel. So that's what the coilovers are all about. So when I look at my um, frequency, it's about 1.1 is where I started. That's how I selected my springs. You know, and, and that's where you select your spring rates and the spring rates lead you to how long they need to be to get to the desired ride height. And you do a lot of calculations to get where you want to be. And you sort of back in. Now, when I get on my main springs, I'm up about 1.6, 1.7. And that means when I'm really hauling and I bottom out that, uh, you know, that, that, that coil over compresses to the point where it puts all the weight on the lower spring or the main spring, it really stiffens that suspension up. You know, that's good. Like if you were, you know, if you're jumping, if you're running high speeds, catch a little jump and you're going to bottom out and you want that kind of softens that blow at the bottom really stiffens up your suspension. So this is the stuff that describes the Jeep and what I've done. So I made it a ton heavier and I put these giant axles on it, which really, I mean, when you start thinking about to the axles and wheels and the unsprung weight sitting down there is almost 2000 pounds, you know, because when I looked at that calculator, my, my sprung weight's about yeah, 3150. Total weight's about 5150 at weighted. So yeah, I've got a lot of weight down there in those axles, but all that beef is what's there to compensate for it. Then you have that nice suspension. You know, you couple that with the coil over shocks and start to design your frequency right and you know get a suspension that's tunable. This is the one thing that I really learned online. One guy said really made sense to me. He says, look, don't make your anti-dive or anti-squat either these huge numbers use your springs and your shocks to tune your suspension because you really can't tune these once they're in but you can tune your springs and shocks so that's the summary expect some more videos i talked a lot about how to use these calculators for a frequency anti-squat and anti-dive and expect to see a lot of videos where i actually run out and uh, hammer the jeep pretty hard to see how it performs with these numbers and then change them up if i need to thanks Oh, by the way, hit that like and subscribe button. Okay, so here's a shot of my front uh, three link. So this would be anti-dive. The number we like to look at is this 61.44%. Um, uh, gives me some tunability. It doesn't have uh, a ton of dive in the front anyway because I have a really stiff suspension, so I can I can work that out. Um, but people like to see the numbers. It's pretty much what I did. Measured everything out, put it in there. Um, everything looks good to me. You know, um, I'm happy with that 6144. Um, I can adjust it if I felt I had to. This height from the ground, this is at the frame end. I can actually lower that three inches. I have two places I can mount the frame and I can go down three inches. So I can go from 27.5 to 24. 0.5 and I could tweak my anti-dive up to 88.68 88 percent basically um, initial test drive had absolutely no reason for that that thing doesn't really dive in the front um, okay here's another fantastic uh, Villa Vista creation and um, in this one essentially what you can do Oops, let's get rid of that. Is, is you can go in here and you can put in um, your spring rates and measure your springs, how much they've compressed. And it tells you essentially, it comes up with an average like corner sprung weight. So when you, when you look down here, this is the important thing. I'm a little over 900 pounds on the front, uh, about 640. Probably when I'm loaded a little bit heavier than that. So, so you know, somewhere around 3,200 pounds of my total 51 150 pounds is um, being held up by the springs and the other 1900 plus almost 2000 we'll say is are those heavy axles and tires and so it, it gives you a, a sense that my my jeep at uh, 50 100 pounds um you know this this helped me understand you know how much weight and where it's at so it's got a considerable amount of weight in those big axles so interesting um, compared to some other jeeps like my buddy matt sometime so another tab on this one is the front to rear balance and one of the things you notice here is he did some calculations now what this is designed to do is if you've ever been driving on a road and you hit some whoops and your jeep starts kind of bucking 
you know, and you have to slow down to stop it from bucking. And so these are suggested rates. So at a different speed that you can put in there, um, you put your wheelbase in there and the speed and what your front um, frequency is, and it should be able to uh, tell you um, what your rear suspension frequency be. So this first one, I know what my front suspension frequency would be. What should the rear be? Now I'm using uh, 1.5 when really my front suspension. So I'm, I'm gonna look here like, okay, I got a 102 inch wheelbase at 60 miles an hour, I've got like a 1.1 frequency, which I know from my other calculations. And it says I should be about 11.9% higher or about 1.2. And, and ultimately that's what kind of what I did when I designed it. This I found this to be much more important um, for my purposes than um, actually understanding anti-squat and anti-dive. And it's funny, if you actually read Bill Vista, he says, this is ultimately where you start. You say, hey, what do I want to do with my vehicle? I want to drive it somewhere between zero and 60 miles an hour. I don't want to have it bucking all over the place. And so what it says is, if you want to do that, and you pick a you know a front frequency of 1.1, and you can look up that, that a 1.1 is a, a really reasonably stiff frequency. About 0.8 is a really flexy royal crawler. Um, 1.1 is kind of a more a street car, which you'd see, you know, and it tells you like at these different speeds that the frequency on the rear should be more. Now the frequency is determined also, so weight plays a big factor in frequency. And so actually what ended up happening is I wanted, because my front was so much heavier over here, Heavy front, light rear, your front uh, rear balance. You want your frequency, you know, up here to be, let's do this 1.1. I'm never going to go 80 miles an hour in that thing. But, you know, I, I was shooting for around 20% higher. So I'm in this 40, 40 is probably going to be what I'm going to be hitting the dunes maybe um, on. So then you start to go, okay, I need about 20% higher. That means it puts me at 1.2, 1.3. Um, and I go, okay, actually about 1.3 or a little higher. So, you know, and, and that's what I ultimately ended up doing. So frequency was important. Now the frequency, you know, we'll get into more detail about what frequency means. Um, but I have two different frequencies for the front and two for the rear because I have those dual rate springs. And when you hit that stop and you transition from uh, your combined spring weight to the main spring weight, um, you're going to have... A, a change in that and it's going to stiffen your ride up and it's kind of one of those things that when you're hitting things really hard and fast you'll you'll find to be pretty helpful but this is kind of where you start and then you look at uh, anti-dive and anti-squat and you talk about that but this is how you tune your suspension for the kind of ride you want um, i'll talk a little bit more about that but i wanted to show you how i used this spreadsheet and, and found it to actually be more useful in designing the way i wanted my jeep to ride than than either anti-squat or anti-dive